Hello everyone, my name is Zard and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be taking a look at LEGO Star Wars set number 75386. This is the Paz Vizsla and Moth Gideon battle from Mandalorian Season 3. It has 289 pieces, costs $40, and has four minifigures, two of the new Imperial Praetorian Guards, Moth Gideon, and then of course Paz Vizsla, um, who is an updated version of his original version from the um, armor um, set from a few years back. Um, the Moff Gideon is new to this set and then the Praetorian Guards are new as well, not exclusive to this set as they will be coming out in the advent calendar in September, at least one of them, to get a third one that you see in the scene. Um, so um, the little build here is a wall, you've got a door, a turret at the top for Moff Gideon, and then the rock work that you see continuing into the smaller battle pack released in the wave as well. Um, the uh, wall itself and design of it, I think it looks pretty good. I think it's a decent display piece and actually a really pretty solid one at that. I think this is one of the better smaller Star Wars sets I've seen, um, and I'm sort of split a bit on it because I really love the look of the set or at least from probably here down because above it it is sort of seems a bit unfinished um, but below that point I think the ground the studs down there the door detailing it's all really quite well done um, and I think all the minifigures are quite um, good as well um, so this set um, you've got the uh, space for your minifigures it's pretty crammed down there. Um, there's, of course, a lot of studs there, but um, there's just not a ton of space there, which is why they do show it on the box as having your characters off that base and sort of standing up there, but of course to keep those characters always standing up, unless you put them on a base yourself, you really can't do it um, without placing them there. Um, the door has the function of going up and down. It can lock up there, which will show you a feature. In a second, there's a little lamp post there, um, and then the rock work as well, with the main colors being dark bluish gray and light bluish gray for the base, and then the dark tan rocks that are continued into the battle pack. Um, the side of the build does have a little compartment. Um, there is a sticker, which... Um, and the little uh, crate, which is the same design crate as the one in the battle pack. Um, there is that. And then the little sticker is a pretty cool detail of uh, Moff Gideon's Light Cruiser, the set that came out a few years back with the first Moff Gideon figure. And you have a little just space to put a character, your crate, um, really anything you want. Um, the low lamppost build there, the locking mechanism of the door is this right here. So when you pull it up, it just stays right there. Um, you sort of, you need to push it up for it to come back down. Um, and yeah, of course the back of this build is quite ugly and doesn't really look all that great with the anti-studs and the feature of being able to hold up the door. The back of the build has no space really for anything. There are two studs there, but realistically it's going to be pretty hard to fit one of these figures back there with all their accessories. Um, the uh, Moff Gideon cannon can go back and forth. Um, it's got two stud shooters there with a green stud. I think my biggest issue with, with this build is how it just feels unfinished at the top. It just it feels like it could have kept on going a little bit. Um, and it's just, with the black pieces, it just sort of throws off the continuity of everything. It just feels unfinished to me um, from the top, but from about here, these two stickers right here for the lights down, I think it looks amazing. And it's one of the better builds I think I've seen in a Star Wars playset like this, which I really like. I love these cheaper playsets. And I feel like we just don't get that all that much with Star Wars. It's ship play sets and not these um, little bits of scenery, which I really love. I love it from other themes, and I'm happy to see it here with Star Wars. Um, the minifigures are definitely the highlight of this set. The Imperial Praetorian Guards have their red look from Season 3, a new helmet mold, and then printing around the back and then from the torso to the toes um, and two different weapons there. They have red heads 
underneath, and I think the helmet mold is quite nice. I think maybe the inclusion of a, a dress piece instead of the legs might have been nice, but of course that does affect the playability and the movement that you get out of the figures, especially placing them on the build. They'd be very stationary if you were to just have those dress pieces, um, which I could see why then they didn't do it. Um, I also think the inclusion of maybe armor shoulder pieces could have improved the figure. I just think there's a bit of the figure that's just a bit bare and doesn't feel complete. The helmet's really nice, the printing's really nice, it just feels like there's something missing from those figures. The Paz Vizsla is slightly different from his uh, previous variation. I really like his weapon, I think that's built up nice, his back piece is as well. Um, the armor piece has the uh, little signet there on his shoulder. Um, the armor is printed onto that larger piece. And then toe, torso, really all the printing you would want. Um, the helmet is slightly different with some of the lines around it as well. But one inclusion of this that I think is just great is the side printing on the helmet. It's it's very small, but something that I just really think elevates this figure, and it's I was sort of impressed by really how good that figure was um, having it. And then I think the highlight of this set is definitely this new Moff Gideon figure in his pretty accurate to the uh, scenes of his outfit from The Mandalorian, the black and red armor. Um, with a new helmet mold, so this set does have two helmet molds, this wave three in total with those Imperial Commandos. Um, the helmet is really quite nice. I d there is a bit of movement um, from the top, it sort of moves down a little bit, which I actually quite like, in that you can sort of perch uh, Moff Gideon up on top of the build, maybe just looking down, and you can actually sort of look down a bit. I think that's sort of cool. I'm definitely sure that wasn't intentional, but it's just an interesting part of the uh, of the uh, set or uh, of the helmet and how it moves. The torso and leg printing, hip printing is all quite nice. Same as the little print for the jetpack and the same piece that was included with the Imperial Commandos just in black. He does have a new face print for this set um, as well as a new skin tone um, for the set, two faces there, and then he also has a hair piece included, which they've pretty much made a common practice at this point, um, including with helmeted characters um, that you get a hair piece, except funny enough, the main character of this show, I don't think Din Djarin has got a hair piece um, for uh, any of the newer sets with his face print in it. Um, there goes Moff Gideon, I guess. Um, but, um, yeah, I think the build is quite nice. Connecting it to the smaller battle pack, um, you've got the clips there, and then the clips on the battle pack. You've got a longer display there. This would be a $60 display with the $40 set and the $20 set. Um, together, I think it looks fine. It's not overly spectacular together. I think the sets honestly work better by themselves. Um, I don't I'm not overly keen on the look of them connected, but I think it's a fun idea, and the connectivity in the wave is always something I like to see, and I'm happy to see it here um, with these two sets. It's always something that I do like in waves is when sets are able to connect together, play together, and really all just work together, um, and I think this one does that. So overall, I think the set is quite nice. Um, I think the detailing on it is pretty good, especially down from here to there. I think the floor with all the studs is nice. Um, the minifigures included are nice as well. Um, I just, I'm not sure if this is worth its $40 price tag. I think it definitely is built up, um, and it's a substantial build, um, but it's also not a huge build. Um, so I don't know. At that, like, um, $35, $30 price. This is definitely a great set to pick up, especially just for those minifigures. And as a display piece by itself, I think it's a pretty strong one. Um, and I think it will go well with other Mandalorian sets, especially. Um, you can sh for sure do a pretty nice display with a couple of those battle packs, the 
TIE Bomber and TIE Interceptor and this, and you have a pretty solid looking um, set, sorry, the uh, TIE Interceptor and the Mandalorian Snub Fighter, I believe it is. Um, and yeah, I think the minifigures are great, um, but I think I'd just wait on this set before picking it up. I think at full price, it's a bit expensive. Um, I think that's sort of my final verdict on this, is that it's a really good LEGO Star Wars set. I love getting pieces like this, and being able to connect to other sets in the wave is great. Two no molds for figures are great, and I think the minifigures are really nice. I think you can make some improvements on the Praetorian Guards. Definitely maybe a dress piece, but that definitely affects the mobility. Maybe adding an armor piece would be nice. I don't think that really affects anything. Um, of course, Moff Gideon having that tape with the black on the outside, red on the inside would be absolutely great um, and would really elevate that minifigure. But where it is right now, I think it's a pretty solid um, Lego Star Wars minifigure. And overall, I think it's a solid Lego Star Wars set. Just I definitely wait for this one until it goes on sale. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.